Hello, everybody. This is Gerald Salenti, and we are honored to have with us today a woman of women, somebody who knows a lot about a lot of different things, and uh, right on the top of the gold hit is Miss Lynette Zhang. Lynette, thanks so much for being here today. Oh, my gosh, Gerald. Thank you so much for having me. You know, you are definitely one of my very favorite people of all time. I love you. Thank you. And I very much admire you and, and all that you do. You know, we're in a, I've been, I've, I've been forecasting trends now for 44 years, you know, best selling books, trends, 2000 trend tracking. I've never been more concerned about the future or the yeah. present than I am right now. Back in February, 2022, February 22nd, 2022, the cover of our Trends Journal magazine was from COVID war to Ukraine war to world war. World War III has begun and the people have no clue about it. They're going to wait for the to become official. There'll be a major event that will happen that will make it official. But it's going on already between what's going on in the Middle East and, and Ukraine. And to me... You know, I first started buying gold, by the way, because of a international crisis back in the late 1970s when the Iranian conflict broke out. And as people were, were being taught to hate Iran and people knowing nothing about the overthrow of Mossadegh by the United States in 1953 with the CIA and the MI6, because Mossadegh had the nerve to say, no, that oil does not belong to Anglo-Iranian oil, better known today as BP, or Standard Oil, better known today as ExxonMobil. It belongs to the people of Iran. Why, how dare you? So they overthrew the government, killed hundreds of thousands of people, and put the Shah in there. So when the revolution began in the late 1970s, that's when I became a political atheist, when Jimmy Carter said the Shah is the island of stability in the Middle East. In the Bronx, we used to say bullshit has its own sound. I started saying, I said, what will, what will change? And I started playing the gold, the futures market. And I turned $5,000 into gold and oil bets into almost three quarters of a million dollars. And that's when I quit my job. And I'm mentioning this because we're at that same point right now as I see it with gold and oil. And uh, gold to me is the number one safe haven asset. So I want to hear what you have to say about this and where you see things going. Well, I agree with everything and I'm old enough to remember all of that myself, right? And what we're dealing with is a completely a complete financial reset, system reset. So, and these are all normal things, war, energy crisis, civil rights, women's lib, inflation, all of these things and more are typical around this transition. So we're getting a lot of warnings, but unless you've been around like we have all these years and lived through it before, I don't think people recognize what's really happening. You know, and it really is, it's the saddest time, but it's also a time of opportunity if you can get into position, if you can recognize what's really happening and make yourself as independent and self-sufficient as you can. And you know my mantra, food, water, energy, security, barterability, wealth preservation, community, and shelter. And frankly, Gerald, community has risen to the tippy top of my list because I believe that we are essentially out of time. I mean, I can't tell you when the world is going to notice it, that it'll be Tuesday morning at 835. But those of us that have lived through this before can see those telltale signs so you can get into position to sustain a reasonable standard of living and also to put yourself in opportunities way because it, it, the inflated assets, that's all about keeping people's wealth in the system so that it's easier to rob. Right? Yeah. Seriously, it is. Oh, the stock market implodes. Who are you going to call? Who's going to care? So, yeah, um, I, I see us at a very pivotal point. I feel as if we are very close 
to seeing things implode. And the reason why, you know, I, I'm working like you on a global level because we do need to focus on creating community locally so you get to know who grows your vegetables and your meat and your milk and, you know, and who has other alternatives for energy, et cetera, because not everybody has the capability of doing everything by themselves. Actually, I don't know anybody that can really do it all. I don't do it by myself. If I wasn't surrounded by a really powerful team, you know, I wouldn't be able to, but Gold and silver, obviously, as a basis for sound money. But on a local basis, I think silver is more important because you can use that more easily for barterability. On a global basis, we have to come together and build a global community that votes with their wallets. And this is the vote out of the system. And we get to say no. I saw in your recent journal that you were working a lot on China. China's actually giving me a level of hope because I'm seeing the people rush to gold. I'm seeing the people come together and say no to the outrageous demands of the governments that they all stay, you know, indoors. And the Chinese people, what's happening with their markets, with their real estate markets, with their shadow banks, What's happening there, people are watching their wealth evaporate. And that's going to happen here too. We're going to, the people will watch their wealth evaporate and it'll be too late to move into this and do all those other pieces that you need to do to sustain a standard of living. So, you know, my work has shifted a little bit. Definitely gold and silver. There's no doubt. You got to have financial freedom and you have to have all those other pieces so that when they put these CBDCs, full surveillance currencies in place, you have the ability to say no. So tell me, how, what, tell me about the company that you have that do you, do you sell gold and silver? Uh, we will be shortly. And this is the first time that I've said it on, on air, to be honest. We are, um, yeah, we've redesigned our focus. So yes, we definitely will be selling gold and silver. We definitely will be executing my original strategy. It's kind of a future proofing your wealth strategy. And, uh, but beyond that, we're working a lot on building community and helping people go from no clue how to do it to being as prepared as possible, developing different skill sets. So it's really exciting. It's global, you know, so I'm going to be doing some more traveling this year. Um, I'm, I believe I'm going to Australia in November and Australia changed my life last year. Because I, I went there to do an event. It was really interesting. The first event, I did my normal thing. But the next two events, I threw all of that stuff out. Because somehow it just didn't feel right to do that. You want to see that? You can watch my YouTube channel. But I just started talking about community and the importance of community. And I got chills over my entire body while I was speaking about this. So that's why I know that that's what I'm supposed to really be doing is building this global community to fight the oppression that's coming. Because I knew the whole world was watching how China managed to oppress and control an entire population. But I'm seeing cracks in that shield now. And that gives me so much hope. Well, it's not only China. I mean, everybody locked down. I mean, you know, you get back and you... Can't go to school. Can't go to work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's a, we, we've lost our freedom in so many ways. So what's the name of the company and how can people get in touch with you? Uh, well, for right now, um, they can see me on YouTube and on my whole team, you know, to help with that sustainability at LynetteZang.com. And just click on it. The Oh, at the Lynette Zhang. We're also on Twitter at the Lynette Zhang, Instagram at Lynette Zhang and Facebook at Lynette Zhang. Within, I would say about four to five weeks, we should be up and running with, uh, with positioning people according to the strategy and selling gold and silver.
We're not quite there yet, but we are working. Um, there are so many exciting things, Gerald. There are so many exciting things. I can't talk about them at the moment, but there are so many exciting things. Have I think we're we're now going to be in a position to really help a lot of people, like like I've been working on for all these years. Oh, I know. Yep, wonderful things. Now I want to go back to gold. Yes. So here's, here's what I see happening. Very simple. They're going to lower interest rates in the run up to the presidential reality show because they want to keep the person that's now playing our treasury secretary, Janet Yellen, in place because her last job was being the Fed head. Right. The head of the Federal Reserve. So now it's in front of everybody's eyes who's running our country when you have the former head of the Federal Reserve as our treasury secretary. Back in 1992, when Clinton was running the first time, the behind the scenes campaign theme was it's the economy, stupid. Mm -hmm. So they're going to do everything they can to prop up the economy. Going back to gold, they're going to lower interest rates. The lower yep. interest rates goes, the deeper the dollar falls. The deeper mm -hmm. the dollar falls, the higher gold goes up. You were mentioning about China. So the, the weaker the dollar goes because gold is dollar based, it's cheaper for other countries to buy gold. And of course, they're buying gold in China because they destroyed the economy with three years of zero COVID policy. And the, as with all booms, the housing boom was overbuilt. It happens all the time, but they made a boom a lot worse because they locked down the place and destroyed the lives and livelihoods of hundreds of millions of people. On the silver front, I don't understand. I, a matter of fact, I remember buying silver I think it's back in the eighties for like, uh, or nineties, like $40 an ounce. Oh, right. Yeah. With the hunt brothers. Yeah. And you know, I, I'm glad that you brought that up because I've been wondering, right? Everybody always wants to know why silver is being suppressed, but it was amazing to me that the president of the United States came out when they took silver out of the currency and said that they were actually going to manipulate the market if you tried to accumulate silver. Right. And I'm wondering if that's not part of what continues the pattern that continues today. Well, Do you have any thoughts on that? Well, yeah, ab absolutely. All you have to go back is to the uh, JP Morgan gang. And what are they convicted of five felonies? And one of them is rigging the gold and silver, the precious metals market. They paid the grand total of $900 million for rigging the markets. Nine hundred, Nothing, no money at all considering what they did in rigging the precious metals market. So yeah, the government doesn't want to see the prices of gold and silver go up because that makes it a realization of how bad the economy is. So of course I believe they're rigging it. And also, if Bitcoin wasn't there, the price right. of both precious metals would be a lot higher. And the reason a lot of people are buying Bitcoin is because you're seeing around the world economies going to crap, like Argentina with the inflation rate of, what, 250 240%. So the people can't afford to buy gold. So they're buying tiny bits of Bitcoin and mm -hmm. other cryptocurrencies. That's what's driving the price up. So where do you see this ending? I mean, how, when do you wh where do you see the breakout points being, and where do you think it's going? Well, uh, silver is a little more challenging, but gold has already had that breakout, you know. And then even after it had the breakout, we saw four tops, and now it's broken above that. However, I will never count on Wall Street to tell me the true fundamental value of either one of those assets. Uh, silver still has yet to complete its its cup formation. And, uh, you know, it, it's completely illogical when you look at the fact that silver gets used up and the number of paper contracts to physical and all of that. I mean, it's clearly going to continue to be manipulated. But I just did this calculation the other day and I hadn't done it in a really long time. And to find out what is the fundamental value of an ounce of gold and an ounce of silver. So I'm about to sound outrageous but probably like somebody telling somebody someday, you know, back in 1900, that, that at some point that one ounce gold coin was going to be at 
you know, 2,200 bucks or wherever it happens to be at the moment, right? Yeah. So the true fundamental value of an ounce of gold, if they were due to do the overnight reset today, well, or last week when I did this calculation, and they were to do it at a one-to-one -one ratio, which they won't, but if they were, the fundamental value of gold is over $40,000 an ounce. Wow. But that really shows you how much loss in purchasing power, the value of the dollar. It doesn't really show you, it, that's just gold in terms of this dollar. Wow. Depending upon where that gold silver ratio is, take that number and divide it. And that's the value of silver. However, you're not going to want to when it gets to those levels. And even though I know for many that sounds outrageous, it's not. Look at what's happening in Venezuela and Argentina and Turkey. And my God, there's a whole laundry list of emerging markets that have been doing recently overnight resets. And if you don't think that that's coming here and the rest of the world, you need to think again. Because personally, I find it very interesting when the pundits on TV will say, gee, we've never seen this before. Wow, what a surprise. I mean, you hear that all the time. And yet you and I have lived long enough to know that what they're actually seeing is the breakdown of a system. Yep. And I am not convinced in my mind that any of these wars or any of these other errors that these central banks make, I mean, they're supposed to be the brightest guys in the world, right? And yet they, they admittedly don't understand inflation, even though they're tasked with regulating that speed of inflation. Kind of, kind of scary. It's like letting your three-year-old drive your car, <laughs> you know? Oh, what you forget that? Don't, don't you remember that both from Yellen and Powell, that inflation is only temporary and then it became transitory? Right. Yeah. I mean, and, and, and yeah, look, where, look where Powell came from. What was his last job? With the private equity group over there, Carlisle Group. Yeah. Private equity. What a, what a joke. I mean, this, they've changed the whole country, the whole world buying up all this stuff. You have a gang that runs the show and going back to inflation. And so when you look at the real, just some, some numbers, if you took inflation and you bought an automobile in 1973, mm -hmm. adjusted for inflation, the average automobile would cost $22,000. Today, the average automobile adjusted for inflation because we're into it is 50,000. The purchase of an average home mm -hmm. in the 1960s, putting inflation into it would be about $111,000. Now it's 400,000. So what I'm saying is you're seeing all this inflation, gold prices should be much, much higher. Of course. Because the value of the dollar has gone down so low by the numbers. And again, mm -hmm. when we're talking about inflation, I talked about housing. No, no, hey, we're not going to add housing into the inflation and the CPI number. <laughs> right. The thing, we, so it's not them. Oh, the price of steak went up. People aren't eating steak anymore. They're eating ground beef. So, but, but, the, so you go to shadow stats and they're showing like the inflation numbers like triple more than triple of what they what they really are right so goes back to gold to me is the ultimate safe haven asset in well it is and and you know what numbers i just crunched and uh, can you pull up that that table and tell me what that is you know you calculate out the average wage in 1971 and convert that in how to how many ounces of gold which this is off the top of my head i think it was like 271 point whatever ounces of gold if you never got a raise in terms of this garbage in terms of fiat right but you were just paid in ounces of gold i think it's something like five hundred and seventy thousand dollars you would be paid today wow right wow. so you know give me the gold you don't have to give me this crap you know, give me the gold and, and pay me a fair wage because that definitely keeps pace with inflation. And back then, one wage earner at 9,500 bucks could support a family of four. 
I don't know. You think you could support a family of four with 500,000 a year now? You know, it's, 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 the, the, I hear what you're saying. And, and it's so is it's, it's the reality. It is the price, by the way, the gold prices have gone up 600% since the start of the new millennium. Take it down. So, you know, that's a, uh, yeah, that, that's a good value. And again, I've been buying gold since the late 1970s. We don't give financial advice, by the way, in the Trends Journal. We have no advertisers, so we're not pumping anybody or telling anybody what to do. The motto of the magazine is think for yourself. Yes. And uh, this is a time really when people, I've, again, I very, very, because when you, put, when you put all the trends together, another reason why gold prices are going up is there's geopolitical fear of what's going on with the escalation of the wars in the Middle East and the Ukraine war. Yes. And now we just heard that the little uh, Macron boy over there, that Katzon Macron, they're sending French troops into Ukraine to fight the Russians, which actually puts them at war with Russia. Yep. So people are buying gold because of a safe haven asset. And there is none that I know of that can match it. And then you look at the economic situation. No one's talking about this. We warned about this three years ago, the office building bust. Oh, yeah. People to work at home. People are saying to themselves, I'm getting up at five o'clock in the morning, driving an hour and a half each way. Yep, there's the magazine. I'm not yep. going to do this anymore. And I'm the guy that has all these people in his offices is sitting in cubicles. I don't see these people. Yeah, stay home. I don't need all this office space. Your office vacancy rate, meaning empty buildings in New York City, 23% vacant. Your office occupancy rate of the 10 largest cities in America, according to Castle Systems, is only 50.7% occupancy. So now all the businesses that depended on commuters, they're going yep. down. Yep. And these office building owners are not going to be able to pay their debt. And their debt is interest rate based. So now with these revolving loans, their debt is up. Interest rates are higher. They have a lot less tenants. They're going to be defaulting. We're going to see a banking bust, the likes of which we've never, ever seen to me in the history of the world, part one or part two. Well, I have a question for you on that same front, because what they want us to believe is that, oh, this, prob this problem is contained in regional banks. Do you think that's so? Absolutely not. Because <laughs> in fact, even the big banks have, have a, a lot of uh, uh, equity in this, small and, and uh, medium-sized banks do. But you know how many they're, they're showing now? The latest, it's in this week's Trends Journal, that are in danger? 282. Yep, 282 banks. Look what yep. happened last March when the Silicon Conman Valley Bank went. And look what one bank did. One bank that nobody yep. ever heard of. So now you got 282 that are in danger. And the site to go to, by the way, that I really think is terrific is Wall Street on Parade. Yes. And, and Russ Martins. Mm -hmm. The stuff that they have there about the bankster system nobody else has. So again, it goes back. The reality is going to hit the streets when the markets crash and the banking bust is going to bring down the markets, if not something else. So again, when the, when the, when the stock market crashes to me, gold prices could easily double. So here's an, I, mean, I know you're doing the interview, but here's another question. How do you, Think that it impacts the balance sheets of the central banks that have also been buying up mortgage-backed securities. Oh, it's a it's a it's a con game. <laughs> They'll just print out. Look what they did. Look it's, what they did. Again, I I took out the domain name, the Panic of 08 in two thousand seven. I saw this coming. Yep. Central banks dumped in twenty nine trillion with a T to bail out the banks. 
between 2007 and 2009. That's according to the Levy Institute of Bard College. Now let's go back to Wall Street on play. They just came out with how much more money the, they really dumped in to bail out the banking system back last year that they didn't report. It's a crime syndicate. They're going to make up anything they can to do anything they can. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, everybody always thinks, oh, you've been talking about this for a while and oh, it hasn't happened. There's so much under the surface that's oh. happening that's being hidden and what about all the derivatives on all of the the contracts on i mean that that's in the quadrillions or what's above quadrillion because nobody really knows no nope. it's nope. been very calm look at the Amer america we're, 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 we're nearing 35 trillion dollars in debt paying a trillion dollars more to service the debt every hundred days mm-hmm I mean, who could, who could run a business like this? Yeah, really. Only somebody that's paid by the taxpayer and yeah. can yeah. value the currency. And that's really why you need sound money. Yep. You got to have it. You got to have it. Yeah, you need it. And have access to somebody else that has it. And I don't mean you steal it from them, but you build a community with them and you bring your skill sets and what you have, the value that you bring to the table, and then somebody else can bring their value to the table, whatever it is that they have. It's, it's, it's critical. It's critical. And if you want to get that safe haven asset, Lynette Zhang will be having it being offered to you and I, <laughs> and I, I, I supported a hundred percent and I bought before, uh, I believe in what you're doing. So, uh, because I know the prices that you, uh, offer it are very, very reasonable and, and better right. than most anywhere else. And you'll be able to learn more about it by going to the website. Soon. It is. <laughs> Soon. There I mean, you're, is. All of this before, there's the YouTube. Yeah. Um, that's where we're doing most of our visible work, but we're doing lots and lots of work. And I'm telling you right now, white glove service, I don't care if you've got five bucks, you got five million bucks. Treat people the way you want to be treated. That is just critical. And that is what we are doing there. You know, that is the most, that's so important. I say the same, you know, people say, what could I do? I do something positive to help anybody you can. Mm -hmm. you do the best you can. So thank mm -hmm. you so much for being on with me. I really appreciate it and appreciate all you do and, and having the honor to, of your friendship. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh, Gerald, you know, I feel the same way about you. I just adore you. Everybody should be listening to this man. He's so wise and with a heart bigger then all of New York. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ciao, ciao.